Barry, just overall, what would you think of the Central Michigan performance? Oh, sloppy. Yeah, there were some really good moments, but we were just way too sloppy and uh, shot ourselves in the foot a lot and just, you know, um, to be honest with you, to some degree, some uncharacteristic mistakes, uncharacteristic mistakes, uh, just with, you know, some pre-snap issues that obviously were the most disappointing thing about the game is just we just played sloppy uh, at times. Script is going real well. I mean, you score it on the opening drive of every play. What, what are you guys diagnosing? What do you see after that the rest of the first half of maybe what's what's not kind of carrying over? Oh, I don't think it has anything in relation to the script. You know, I mean, obviously we, we script, you know, in between series too, you know, like as far as what the plays are. And, you know, in my mind, I, I kind of have a bank of them that we go with and talk through. And so uh, I think sometimes maybe the familiarity of practice them a little bit more on the previous day in the flow, which we do. We try to get, you know, a few of them to start the game out. Uh, and then so really after that, you know, it's, I don't know necessarily about it making adjustments, but we just didn't execute, you know. And, and there was obviously, just like every game I've ever coached and called, there's going to be a handful of plays that, I, that they have a better call than I do. And that's the cat and mouse game. That doesn't make it okay. That doesn't make it acceptable. But the truth is that's the way it is in football at every level, that there's times where you call a play and it's not the most optimum look, you know. And, uh, and they had that happen a few times, and it's my job to make sure that doesn't happen very often, you know, especially in critical moments. So, but we got it. We didn't execute really well uh, in the middle, similar to a couple of weeks ago. You know, just we're hitting too many lulls right now, offensively. A lot of signs of life, just hitting some lulls that obviously, as you go on the road, we're gonna have to tighten up. It seems like Luke has really good chemistry um, with Pat Bryant and Franklin. You know, against a defense like Nebraska, is it vital to kind of have that passing game clicking? Oh yeah, I mean, it, anybody we play. I mean, obviously Nebraska is a. Uh, they've got a great team, a great defense. Um, you know, it's obvious when you turn on the film. We know that from playing them last year. The scheme is a really great scheme, and they've got a lot of confidence. And But anybody you play in the Big Ten, you have to be balanced. And um, and if you're not, you're going to be in for a long day one way or the other. And so we got to continue to throw and run the ball to have to have the opportunity to be successful. Last year, only seven points scored against Nebraska. Um, what what do you think is kind of different with this offense coming into this year? Are you more confident about this meeting? Well, last year's last year. You know, we talked even even when we referenced Kansas or the rematches. Obviously, that's there's a lot of people that were involved in that, and there's some people that weren't. You know, on a part of our team, and the ones that were, starting with myself, you know, that's not a great feeling when you you let your team down and you don't score. Uh, it's our job, as I've said it several times, and it's not my saying; it's anybody's saying, is that my job and our job is to score one more point than the other team and. Um, you know, whatever that looks like, whatever that feels like, we don't care. And, uh, you know, obviously last year we didn't get it done, and this, this year presents a new opportunity and uh, against a very formidable uh, opponent in, a, in an environment that will be really challenging. Gary, what do you like about what's going on in the perimeter run game right now, especially maybe like the pinball action that you've got with your interior guys? Well, I think we our tackles are athletic and can pull, and, uh, and uh, you know, our, I think our receivers do a really good job blocking on the perimeter. Uh, and. You know that's something that we got to continue to grow. Um, it, just in general, we got we got to be able to attack all field zones. You sure. know, at any time, in any run or pass. You know, and that's that's when you're good on offense. Is when you can go horizontally and go vertically with run and pass. That's when you've got a good system. And we've been inconsistent in that regard. We've had flashes in those schemes that you're referring to, and uh, we've got to be sharp in all of our phases and all of our schemes this week. Coach, when you're three games in, what do you, what can you learn about yourself just watching your own game film? And how does that kind of inform yeah. uh, how you game plan for this week? Sure, that's a great question because, you know, you think you know, and the best way to find out about who you are is play games against good teams, and we have. And now we're about to play a, real, you know, a, great, a great team. And uh, on defense, you know, I mean, overall, just a really good team, you know, and uh, in particular defensively as we go into my lens, as I look through the lens of it, you know, this defense is, uh, will be, a, you know, probably the biggest, strongest, fastest defense we've gone against to this point in the season. And so what I've learned is that when we execute, you know, uh, the good things happen. When I put my guys in good positions um, and we execute the way we're capable of, good things happen. Now, we're going to have to fight, scratch, and claw for everything we get, um, and execution will be at a premium this week. So that's the biggest takeaway for me is, like, when we, we do things right, we put ourselves in good position, we can be really good on offense. And we don't, uh, when I don't put them in good positions, we don't execute very well, we're, we're going to sputter at times. Very what do you see? You guys want to run the ball better? Coach Beal always talked about that. When you go about troubleshooting, that personnel play, whatever formation. How do you kind of go about it? What are you seeing right now? Yeah, you dissect everything, right? You go, you look at, um, you know, uh, to the first three games, what you've been efficient in, what, what, you know, what's give you problems, and you reflect on the previous game and say, well, is this scheme related? Is it call related? Is it execution related? Is it personnel driven? All those things. So it's, yeah, I could talk to you for an hour about how you dissect that, but it's our job to peel that back to put our guys in the best position that they can be. 
possible to be able to execute and you know stay ahead of the chains and be efficient in our running game. And we've had moments of that. We've had flashes of that. We've got to have more consistency there. What stands out to you about Nebraska's defense? Big, fast, strong. You know, big, fast, strong, confident. Um, and uh, you know, I think it's it's impressive to watch them play. And um, you know, but our guys, are, you know, our guys are going to be ready for that challenge. And they know it's a Big Ten battle on the road. And they know a lot of our guys know what that looks and feels like. The guys that are new to the program. They don't, but they're going to figure it out in a hurry. Uh, but, I, you know, their scheme is a, you know, a unique scheme that gives people a lot of challenges uh, in, uh, in preparation, and they know their scheme well. And so, you know, I think they've got a, we, they got a lot of respect from Ariane going into this game and who they are. I heard you guys you, practicing with that crowd noise, you know, just for an offense and for your offense. What's it like playing in an environment like Nebraska's on Friday? Well, it, you know, any road game uh, – you know, in our in our league, is presents that that challenge. Now, obviously, I was at Maraska a couple of years ago, and obviously, their their experience is unique uh, to some some degree and uh, super loud. You know, I don't know if you can. We can try to emulate the best you can, but we've got to be able to have a, a great deal of poise in that environment from start to finish uh, because we know it'll be loud and uh, it'll it'll create a challenge. But fortunately for us, none of the people in the stands can make a tackle or you know cover <laughs> anybody, and uh, they do you know they do create a, an advantage there. Obviously, just like our people at home do. You know, our people have been phenomenal at home. Uh, and the noise and the when to use the noise and so that they certainly are very educated fans and do the same thing We've got to be able to handle that challenge Are you pleased with addressing the pre-snap penalties from last game through this week so far because that's obviously something that crowd noise can contribute to so Absolutely. Yeah, that, that can add complexity on top. That's one of the disappointing things about In retrospect, you know, we're at home and the environment didn't create any challenge And so now we're going into an environment that will create challenges And I think our attention to that and our attention to detail and our focus on that has been phenomenal this week uh, but we got to carry that on tomorrow and the rest of the week and then take it into the game and apply that. What's your message to the offensive line right now is you and Bart and, and Coach Bioma um, obviously want more out of the run game. What's your message to them? What do they need to do? Well, they're just like anybody else on our team, uh, starting with me. Uh, we got we to get better, you know. I mean, we got to look in the mirror and figure out, you know, what I can do to help our football team become uh, more complete and more in sync. Because, there, again, there's phases, there's times, there's moments where it's like, bam, you know, bam, 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 you know. And then there's moments where it's – and that's kind of football in general, but there's too many of those right now for us, you know, for to be uh, the consistent the offense that we want to be. So it starts with looking in the mirror. How can I get better? How can I put my guys in better position? Then they have to look at that same way as how can I improve? And then it starts functioning as a unit, you know. So it's, a, it's kind of a micro picture. Um, and then it goes to a little bit of a, more of a macro view. And so the, all those matter. Uh, and and uh, I hope I use those examples right. I'm not sure if I did, but it seems like it made sense to me, you know. And, but we, we just, we just got to be more synced up, you know. And, um, and that's, we've had moments where guys have played really well across the board, in particular the line. They've all had their moments, right? We just got to get them all five playing together at the same time. And, and I'm confident we, we're going to get them there. Coach, you, moved, you guys moved into the top 25 this week. Is, that, is there a value there at all for you as a coach and also the, as for the team or not? Well, sure, there's value there. I mean, I, we, don't, we don't pay much attention to the outside noise, but right. sure. I mean, it's a lot better than being not ranked. Yeah, we got to go, you know, we got to go and earn, earn that, you know, mm -hmm. uh, earn that ranking or, you know, not back that up. But, it's, you know, our guys, our players have put themselves in position to be noticed because of the way we started the season, and that's always good. Uh, does that is that going to carry any weight when we go in the game on uh, Friday night? No, it won't carry any weight when the two teams are on the field, nor nor where they're ranked. You know, it's just right. two teams getting after each other. But it's a nice, I think it's nice for our players to be recognized for that, and they know and the guys who are around here a couple of years ago know that the more the more you have success, the more those good things come your way. You know, potentially. Uh, but we're focused on Friday night and having to go to the road and go on the road and a, and a really. Uh, Playing a really good football team on the road, and we're going to have to we're going to have to play our best. Gary, it seemed like in the preseason, a lot of the talking points was that Luke's processing was getting faster, the ball was getting out quicker. Mm -hmm. I would imagine through three games, you've, you've seen that. Yeah, happened. I think that backs that up. I mean, uh, you know, there's there's uh, there's still some times where, you know, like, uh, you know, we it, that maybe we want it just a little bit faster, but like that's every game I've ever sure. coached or every quarterback I've ever coached. There's always a player too. You're like, speed it up. I think he's been. I really like where Luke's at, you know. I really like where he's at and the way he's seeing things, the way he's playing, the way he's communicating. Um, and, uh, you know, we're get, I think our team's ready to offensively to another day work to get ready to go over there and, and see what we could do. Uh, but I do like the way the quarterback is processing the game and, and playing. 
Uh, I think he's played at a really strong level right now. Very obviously your top two wideouts are playing really well, but how's that slot position evolving in your offense with Collins and really Zakari and Pat? Yeah. How's, how's that group kind of evolving and what it is in this offense? Have you, um, have you noticed or kept track of how many different guys have been in the slot? I know you're asking me that a lot this summer. You no, know, it's, like, it's, just, and I, it's no, different I mean, with the right. going, right? Like, right, yeah, it's different. So you see, and I, like I told you guys, you're going to see a bunch of guys in there. We'll continue to see that, you know, so it's a mix and match of skill sets and, uh, you know, groupings on who goes in there. And I think we've got a bunch of guys that are capable of playing in there. Um, and so it's been good to see each of them have their kind of the moments, you know, uh, all of a sudden, sometimes I don't even know who the, you know, like who's in there just because we have some free rotation. A guy may be tired and I looked up and we threw the ball and it was Colin who's, you know, who is our starting slot. And, and then another time it was Hank in there. And, and so that's, I think that's good for our team to create balance. And uh, again, I, I can't brag on our wide receiver room enough as far as just the, uh, the, the guys that have been there and, and uh, been unselfish and just, play, you know, when they've had opportunities to make them, and we're going to have to make them Friday night now. I mean, you know, this is a good, solid physical defense, and they got to show up again for us on Friday. As a coordinator, just the plays of, um, like, the run pass selection has been pretty balanced so far. Just as a coordinator, I'm just curious, like, it, it, sometimes like, you have to throw it 60 times, like, you have to throw it 50 times. Like, yeah. As a coordinator, like, do you pull the trigger on that? Well, yeah, balance is, balance is true balance is be able to win the game running and be able to win the game throwing be able to win a game either whatever dictates and so true balance is not anybody can go out there and achieve true balance by calling 50 passes and or you know if you have 80 plays calling 40 runs and 40 passes you can do that that's not true balance in my in my perspective I don't think nor any offense coordinator would see it that way you know it just so happens that maybe it's played out like that but true balance is having the ability to run the ball and win a game and be able to pass the ball and win the game and uh, we've had flashes of both of those through the first three weeks but we got to piece it together and so uh, my job is to put us in the best position, whatever schematically that reflects uh, at the end of the game for us to have a chance to win it. Very good work. Uh, on Collins' chunk play against Central Michigan, like, obviously got a big block from Pat, but it seemed yeah. like Collins, he set that up a little bit for himself. Is that kind of a heady play for a red shirt? Yeah, he's shifty and he's, and he's very heady. That's one of the things that's been an advantage for him. He's got really good instincts and knows how to play the game. He's got really good timing as far as like where, the spots that he's in, when he's there how he gets there, and so he continues to show that. Uh, you weren't here in 21, Barry, when Barge was birthed, but did you, uh, do you like what you're seeing out of Brandon Henderson and then or like Clayton Leonard in that, in that big package right now when, when you go to it? Yeah, I mean, obviously we've, you know, we've not been, um, you know, when we lost Cole, uh, we've been, you know, at tight end position. We've had some different people in there uh, and trying to continue to work and develop some depth there, and so obviously we wanted to get Brandon involved in the game and thought he did a good job in his role. And, you know, he's a big guy that's athletic that we think can help our team. Um, and he's got good hands too, you know, he's got good hands. So um, yeah, that's one thing that's unique about him. Not a lot of turnovers given up by your offense. Obviously Luke hasn't thrown a pick. Uh, what's been key for your offense so far? Now? Well, I mean, just, you know, obviously we know, everybody in the program knows how important, uh, you know, that battle is and taking care of it. And so it's a, I think it's an emphasis by, by them and understanding that and, uh, you know, an emphasis by the staff. And obviously that's something that is huge in the uh, huge uh, predictor and outcomes of, you know, close knit games and close games is just, uh, you know, who takes care of the ball the best. And that's going to be obviously a premium moving forward for every one of these Big Ten battles. I feel like Luke, too, is when he misses, he's missing in the right way, is it, you know, to whenever, yeah, whatever I understand chances what you're he saying. takes. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah I mean, obviously, I, I don't – you don't ever want to miss, you know, when a guy's open. But if you miss, there's some, there's some, uh, you know, like he pulled one back the other day that he missed. He saw something and he didn't see it, saw it wrong, and he pulled it and went down the ground, you know. And so he's he's having some awareness of it. And these guys, uh, you know, obviously Friday they they do a good job of of kind of preying on that. So we got to be smart and take care of the ball again on the road.